Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. My name's Tracy, and um, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this mask, which is very similar to the style of mask worn by the emergency services. Um, it's kind of what I like to call the duck style because it's like a duck's beak, and um, although this is crocheted and you can't actually see through those holes. I wouldn't advocate that you trust a crocheted or knitted mask 100%. I would always try to pack it out with a liner like this one. This is the mask that I cut up to make this one. So there were parts of this that I've used to make this mask. I used the elastic because I didn't have any elastic and I also took the strip from this part here and I've crocheted it in so this enables you to put it around the nose like that. If you can't find one of these masks and you can't get hold of that then anything like a pipe cleaner would work just as well as long as you've got a way of pinching that around your nose because so many masks are just on but you really do need this strip. Now these ones are quite flimsy. I've got a variety of masks here that um, that I've sort of used over the time. And these are the ones that you see predominantly. And the uh, extender strap that I made that's fully um, adjustable um, from Criss Cross Crafts, that one is sort of designed for this. Um, because you can actually adjust that to however tight you want that around the back of your head so you don't have to put these elastic bands here around your ears or if you've had any other kind of mask you don't have to put it around your ears because um, it can get quite sore but this one's metal strip is quite thin but it does go all the way along but it's much flimsier than the one that was in this mask um, this mask, however, is kind of, um, I don't know, a little bit thicker than this one. This one is pleated so that it stands out from your mouth. But all of these, I find, these kind, do end up kind of getting sucked into your mouth. It's only the ones that are more duck shape that actually stand apart from your mouth. This is the one that I tend to wear when I go out. It's got a bit of a very hard metal strip which you can pinch tight it's got a little um, filter on it and two uh, straps plus it's quite sturdy and these are the ones that I use more often than not when I can I've also got these which are like the duck one I've shown you but they're far thicker these straps are far sturdier and they come in a sterile pack so I've had a, a variety of masks over the time and worn them and found the pitfalls and things I like about each one, things I don't like. So I designed mine around all of the best parts of the masks that I've worn so far and I decided that I wanted to make it so it fitted really well over the nose. Um, somebody told me that if you can see through the mask, if you can actually see through those um those holes then you need a filter you can't see through these but still those holes need to only be microscopic so um i would wear a filter at all times even with one of these so i'm going to show you how to make this and i'm going to use this poundland yarn it's only is really inexpensive it's just a dk weight it's not the thinnest dk and it's one of those that's got um another color spun into it so you can see everywhere that there is a blue strand it's kind of twisted in with white and i like this yarn a lot it's very soft it's quite fibery which is another reason to um, have that liner I think because there's nothing worse than having a mouth that's full of fibre and that's just not nice at all so I'm just going to pause the video while I clear these masks out of the way and get my bits and pieces together okay so if you haven't already please don't forget to subscribe to my channel 
hit the notification bell as well and you'll be informed when there's new videos. I do have a podcast that I do every day. Um, it's called Rocks Chat. I do live streams as well as tutorials. I've got a crochet along going on at the moment, so do give it a watch. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be f find out when those things pop up. So I'm going to use a four millimeter crochet hook for this. And as I said, this is a three weight, a DK yarn. I've got a pair of scissors handy and a darning needle, which is here. Now, the only criticism I can find of my mask that I made here is that it tends to twist. You see that? It's got a bit of a twist. And I think this is because I made my chain and then I went one way and then I carried on using the same chain and went this way and it seems to have this twist about it so I'm not sure if I just made two pieces and did a join all the way around if it would still do that twist and as I said to you before I really want to I've got a little needle stuck in there so I don't want to uh, come a cropper there I want to be able to stuff this like put one inside so it actually needs to be made just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take that <clears throat> into consideration. So if you want to make it this size, exactly as I have here, and you're not wanting to put one of those inside, I made um, 17 chain, but I'm going to make this slightly bigger and do 19. So you just make a slip knot, and you can make that however you want. Um, I was taught just to, I'll show you how I was taught to do it. It's ever so simple. You just make a loop, go behind it and put the yarn through it. And there you've made your slip knot and you insert your hook and you can pull that tighter. So I'm going to do um, a total of 20 chain. And chain is very simple. Just yarn over and pull through. So I've done four. Now I'm going to pause the video and come back to you when I have 20 because otherwise it's very off-putting when someone else is counting. Okay, so I have 20 chain and that is now larger than that bottom. The reason that I did uh, 17 was because it's the same size. But if you want to put a liner in, then you really do need to have it a little bit on the bigger side. So this is very simple and straightforward. We need a nice tight stitch. And so I'm just going to do this in a um, UK double crochet, which in the US is a single. And it's simple as going into the second chain from the hook. This loop doesn't count. There's your first one. There's your second. Insert in your hook. Yarn over and pull through. So you have two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through both. And I'm going to do that in every stitch all the way along. So it's yarn over, two loops, pull through. In every single stitch all the way to the end. So you will have, by the time you get to the end, you should have 19 stitches. And I'm not doing them tight, I'm just keeping my tension um, not, not loose, just even. And don't worry about, I'm only going through one side of my, uh, I'm not going through two loops, I'm just going through one. I quite often do that. I know a lot of people like to go through two loops. Just leaning on my yarn so just moved it slightly so we're just going to do that in every single stitch all the way until we get to the end not far to go now I'm going nice and slow so that you can keep up Okay, so we're next stitch, we are at the end. Now I'm going to do a chain, but cinch it low 
so that it doesn't look like a stitch. And in my first stitch on the other side, I'm going to turn my work. And in this first one, I'm going to do two stitches. So I'm going to increase in that one stitch. Now I'm just going to do one in every single stitch to the end. I find that keeping it loose, not not loose, that's the wrong word, keeping it from being tight helps those holes. Um, although they're there, the fibres of the yarn help fill those holes as much as possible. So just one in each all the way to the end. Let's pull some yarn out. <clears throat> Just keep going. As this is the smallest, tightest stitch, I think this is the most appropriate one for a mask because it is the, in a way, the, the tighter knit of all the stitches almost there okay so this is my last stitch that there is my chain so i'm just going to go into my last stitch and just do one i've lost it i did a slip stitch by mistake because my camera's in the way and i couldn't see where i was going made it a little small Trying to do it with this um, camera in the way isn't always the easiest thing to do. So, yeah. That's better. And do one. Now we're going to do a chain. Cinch it down so it's not doesn't look like a stitch when we get to the other end. And at the beginning of this row, I'm going to do two in my first stitch right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an increase at the beginning of each of our rows. So I'm going to now just carry on doing one in each and I'm going to pause the video and I'll catch up with you when I get to the end of this row. Okay, so I've made it all the way to the end. Done one in my last stitch. Do my chain and cinch it down a little bit and this is how it's looking so we're going to do one increase at the beginning of every row until we have um enough for our mask so if i were to put this one up against that you can see that mine finishes roughly where the mask finishes so i don't know if you can see that there we go if i put that level I kind of made it so that it mirrors, apart from this part here, this mask. But if you want to insert this mask or something, a filter like it, into it, it needs to be slightly bigger. But if you're not making it so that you can put one of these inside and you've done the 17 um, foundation chain, you'll want to increase one at every row until you have 30 stitches um, and then you should have exactly the same size mask as this but as I've done a three extra stitches I'll be increasing until I have 33 so that's what you want to do just carry on increasing one at the beginning of every row just um, instead of at the end at each end of the row it's just one at the beginning end of each row until you have if you've done 17 you'll have 30 stitches if you've done the 20 you'll have 33 so i shall pause the video now and i'll catch up with you when i've got as i've done 20 i will have 33 stitches okay so i have done my until I've got my 33 stitches. So this is how it's looking now. And if I can get this one, I've kind of made sure that it's bigger. 
where it counts. So <clears throat> I don't need this part here. And um, so what I would do now is I've kind of gone to the trouble to make the other side. So you need two identical sides. With the this one, as I said, I didn't do another chain. I just picked up these chains here and um, carried on. So it was shaped like that when it was finished. But I'm not sure if that's why it's twisting, so I've left it. So all I've done is when I finished off, I've left a really long tail. Not that one, but this one. So that I can use that for sewing together. So just place them on the side. On the, but um, There we go, that's the right Well, I want them that way actually, don't I? So that the wrong side is down. So that like that. Is that right? Now the right side's inside. So when I turn it in the other way, I've got the right side facing. Either side, it doesn't matter which is the right side, but it just seems that when you the, the row you start off always seems to be the right side. So you match them up and then you just... I crocheted these together on this one. So if you turn it inside out, there is the seam because I did a slip stitch through both sides all the way along. So I crocheted that seam. But I'm going to sew these because I want to see if it makes a difference sewing them rather than crocheting them together. Um, just, you know, it doesn't matter. You can do what you want. You can either sew them or you can, or you can crochet them together. It really doesn't make a difference. But I just want to see if um, that contributed to the twisting. Probably not. <clears throat> so you just catch the same side and we're going to sew it all the way down just going through both sides and making a seam I'm just going to sew it like that like a run-in stitch if you like all the way along I may not have left, went off then, sorry about that. I may not have left a long enough tail um, to go all the way along the edge. <clears throat> but I'm just going all the way along and sewing my seam together. It might make a difference with the um, the twisting by doing it in two separate sections. Let's go down a little bit. That's better. Whoops. Pulled out. But you kind of get the drift. <coughs> Excuse me. I did leave a long tail the other side as well. So I'll end off when I get to the end of this one. If I can didn't go torn into plan. Sometimes I find if I wet my finger, it will go through easier. Of course, I, I thread it ever so easy until I get on camera. So where's the way? So just keep going all the way. Sewing those together. Along this edge. When I get to the bottom, I'm going to end off because I know I won't be able to get all the way along with this same piece of yarn. I'm just going to end that bit. I'm just going to do that off camera. So I've made my little knots. I'm just going to sew that in. Bury that tail, I mean. All the way along, do it on that inside edge. 
and it won't notice. And go back the other way. I'm going to cut that off. And if I turn it at the moment, that's how my seam will look. Obviously, all um, even out. But I'm going to go all the way along to this side now. And I'm going to use this, this end to sew along here. And I possibly won't have enough to go all the way along. I'll do the bottom part separately. So I'm going to pause this and all I'm going to do now is make sure I sew this seam together and along this seam together and once I've done that I'll come back to you. Okay so I've sewn all along those edges so that it's um, just this opening left and I'm going to turn that in that way, in the right way and there we are we've got it and that doesn't, well it's still a little twisty but not as bad, I don't know, well, maybe it is. So maybe it makes no difference whatsoever. I don't know. I think it's just the yarn because I used a size four. And um, so now, when I, got, when I did this one, all that I did was I used my bits and pieces from my, my mask. I cut out, leaving a perforation around the outside so it was secure inside and um, if you see what I mean you can cut this just the side of the perforations and that kept it inside the little paper part and I laid it along here and I just made a small section like that and turned it over and it was inside and I sewed it around so I sewed it enclosed just made a small rectangle, folded it over so that was on the inside and that then is enclosed, encased in there. And I used the same um, ties. It just came out in two separate sections. So I sewed it more securely on either side and secured it to the mask. And so it just fit around your head like this and then it fits on so that would then obviously be the top where the the nose parts in there and this goes around your head so it's exactly the same all you need to do is make a section a little section just up like that turn it in on itself with that strip inside whether it's one of these that you've managed to retrieve out of here it can even be a mask you've used just take the strip out or a little pipe cleaner anything that will cause that if you haven't got anything you can use it as it is but I think it's better if you can have, um, have the, um, the, the thing that comes out of it so this has got a needle sticking out of it so it's a little bit difficult to get in but now that fits in an awful lot more snugly I would cut those two ends off because they're making it too big but I would just sort of wear one of those inside like that don't need this extra bit obviously and um, you can trim it so that this outer edge is off and just pop it inside and that would be extra protection because I wouldn't um, necessarily want to wear one of these um, on its own just need to um, work on that seam to sort of open it up a little bit because it's obviously tucked in on itself but um, you can you can kind of either block that or just put something on it and get it to be snug in that seam. So it's nice and easy. Just make a, a, a small rectangle that fits over the strip and secure it in. I don't want to do one because I don't want to cut this up for no reason. Once I've used this mask, then I'll take the strip off and I'll finish this one off and I'll use the this elastic from here as well because I don't have any um, with the lockdown I've not been able to get any elastic but that's how we sew the mask and this is how it will look in the end it will just um, obviously have your nose section there and your straps it will just be slightly bigger than this one if 
you follow the uh, larger size. So it's um, just to recap, it was 17 chain will make one this size and 20 chain will make it so that that whole filter, when you, once you trim off those bits, will fit inside this. I think I prefer it with the filter. And there's a lot less twisting um, this way. So thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed that. And um, once I've um, used this, I'll finish this one off to match this one. And um, But, um, you know, I don't advocate really wearing any kind of crocheted or knitted masks without a filter or without um, making a cotton liner. If you have material, then please do line it because as you can see, you can see through those holes. When you get up close, you can't see detail through them because the fibers stop you. But it, the holes that are letting the virus through um, are microscopic. So you need something more like this to be absolutely protected. So that's why I would line it. I'd line it either with um, some cotton material or just popping in filters. So thanks for watching and uh, have a great day. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye for now.